thinking about career, jobs, and professions. And some of you already start applying to these jobs. To the ones of you that succeed in getting that dream job, I say, well done. But to the ones of you that are accumulating rejections and are failing to get the foot in the door, I say, congratulations. You're actually on the right path to achieve your full potential. You see, as a society, we have chosen to promote success instead of failure. Our evolution in the history books is often told as a succession of small successes, chronological events that make sense and actually explain where we are today. There's nothing wrong with that, except that it's just the tip of the iceberg. What we are not talking about is the infinite amount of failures that constitute the real body of the iceberg and actually stay below the water surface. For example, Thomas Edison, considered the greatest American inventor from his time, father of the electrical bulb. He did not have an easy life. After hundreds of unsuccessful attempts, he was questioned by a journalist of his time. Mr. Thomas, isn't it a shame that after tremendous amount of work that you have done, you have not been able to get any results? And Thomas would laugh about these questions, and with a smile on his face, he would say, results? Why, man? I have thousands of results. I know several thousands of things that do not work. So how many of you actually try a challenge for 1,000 times? How many of you keep trying after 1,000 failures? How many of you accumulated 1,000 negative grades in exams? Hmm? Much has been said about success in, uh, in all the different um, speeches worldwide. And quite often, the message is similar. In order to succeed, one needs grit, also known as persistency. But be aware, success can take many shapes and forms, and sometimes, even for ourselves, it's not easy to recognize before it is clearly visible to everybody else. In my case, I was born in Portugal, brought up in a city uh, close to, uh, to Lisbon. I was a happy child and had good grades, I participated in the local boys groups, uh, scouts groups, and I actually had very good friends. But at the age of 14, while the doctors were evaluating a lump on my left knee, I've been diagnosed with a severe spinal scoliosis. Later, the lump of my knee has been diagnosed as a benign cancer that I still carry with me until today. But for the spinal scoliosis, I was forced to wear a prosthesis holding my torso 23 hours per day during all my teenage years. It was obvious that my dream of becoming an Air Force, an Air Force pilot was gone. But still, 12 years later, at the age of 26, I was one of the youngest engineering team leads in the Airbus A350 development program. I led a team of 120 engineers spread around four different countries to whom I'm eternally grateful for. When I look back 
And I think if my life would have been different, if I actually have been accepted by the Air Force, I'd say yes, it would have been different, but probably less interesting. So after all this time, I actually do not regret it. You see, life is a very interesting place. It's very ironic. Unlike in video games, where you win and you get rewards, in life, there are secret levels of your true potential that only get unlocked with failure, that only get unlocked with rejection. And I don't think that we need to reinvent the wheel about, uh, about uh, failure and rejection. But I think that there's a lot of lessons out there, lessons that we can learn from, and I would like to call the attention for you to some of them, because they are simply everywhere. As a sports lover and a CrossFit addicted, I find myself often looking for inspirations in the coaches of the best athletes of the world. How do you inspire an athlete to beat the world record? How can you motivate an athlete to do what has never been done before? Or in the case of CrossFit, how do you coach an athlete to highly perform in an event that remains unknown until the event actually starts? Or in the case of a professor, how do you train a student to highly perform in a career that is still unknown? And the answer is being comfortable in being uncomfortable. Being comfortable in a situation where you do not control all the outcomes. Being comfortable in a situation challenging the environment with an unpredictable future. This is actually life. And that's probably one of the best learnings that you can take with you out of your academic experience. And in my understanding, also one of the most useful ones too. You see, for me, for me in life, failure only occurs when you give up on yourself. When you mentally justify to yourself that it's okay to give up. And unfortunately, quite often, many of us still prefer to do that. How many of us have told to ourselves, I'm not good enough? I was not meant to be. I do not have the talent. Others have more talent than I. Make no mistakes. Being mediocre, it's a self-decision. Failure is not an outcome. It's an attitude. So how many of you are willing to accept failure as a learning opportunity to further progress towards your dreams? At the age of 36, 10 years after my Evers experience, together with my friends, we've created a startup and we won the first prize in the largest drone incubator in the world. We were competing against 250 companies worldwide and we still managed to secure the first prize. It's super easy to talk about this. But today, I'm here to talk with you about my previous five startup participations that failed and did not deliver. In all of those ones, I invested time. And in some of them, I even lost money. But each one of those five were a learning opportunity and gave me the tools to better do it in the next time, until I finally did it in 2019. I don't expect you to fail like I did, neither I consider my path the only path. But I expect all of you to dream big and learn to embrace failure. You see, today, just like in my day, we live in an evolving world. 
in my day, the next big thing was internet and telecommunications. Today, the next big thing is sustainability, artificial intelligence, clouding, quantum computing, software as service. As students, each one of you is expected to make big decisions and to have excellent careers. You are expected to excel in these areas. But how can you decide on what to focus on? How can you compete in such a fast-paced, changing environment and still be successful? How can you decide the right decisions in order to be successful? And the answer is that you don't, because success is not made based by taking all the right decisions. Success happens based on the lessons learned that you make from all the right mistakes. So how many of you are trying hard enough? Or should I say, how many of you are failing enough to have the opportunity to learn from your mistakes? How many of you, just like Thomas Edison, and our predecessors continue trying despite hard outcomes. The problem with failing is the cost associated to it. It costs material resources, but most of all, it costs emotional resources. In my case, I endure my failures by having a positive approach towards life, but most of all, for not being alone. Shared pain is half pain. Just like in my case, I believe that you can benefit from sharing your dreams with your friends. This will help you finding partners that can make that journey with you. And this will also help you and allow you and enable you to participate in the journey of your partners. You see, great people become bigger by making others bigger. So don't be afraid to share. Don't be concerned what others might think about your dream and ambitions. Like one of my favorite authors, Dr. Bob Rotella once wrote, when you aim big, you have the possibility to be great. Even your failures will be best than most, most people's best. But if no one thinks that your dreams are crazy, that's probably because you're not aiming high enough. Thank you for your time. Thank you.